Good morning, you guys. Okay, this is a video response to my sister over there at Whippoorwill Holler, Miss Lori. Girl, you made that blueberry barbecue sauce for Jarred Up January, and I was just so intrigued. I was like, I have a bunch of blueberries in my freezer that I had picked, um, when was it, in August? Um, fresh from the blueberry farm, and they've just been sitting there saying, put me in something, do something with me. And as soon as I saw the barbecue sauce, I knew I had to try it. So I'm gonna twist mine up just a little bit, just to make it a little bit different than uh, Whippoorwill Hollers. And by the way, if you are not subscribed to her, oh, go treat yourself. Her, her channel, honest to goodness, one of the best channels on YouTube. It is, it's like a cozy, comfy chair with a warm blanket and a cup of herbal tea and a fireplace. That's what her channel feels like when you go over there. It's amazing. And she is old school and I'm learning so much from her. I just, uh, I, her, her, her channel is like, um, like a cooking encyclopedia. <laughs> like if you want to learn how to cook and cook old school or can or preserve anything, you need to learn it from Whipper Will Holler. She's one of my favorites. So I will leave her channel up above. I'm also gonna leave up above her video to her blueberry barbecue sauce. I have never canned or made a vinegar-based barbecue sauce. I've always done, you know, like a Sweet Baby Ray's kind of barbecue sauce. So I'm really excited about this. I plan on using this on chicken wings, chicken breast, and uh, baby back ribs on the grill. So um, I'm, I'm I'm gonna spin you around, I'm gonna show you the ingredients I'm gonna be using, and then we're gonna get started. Okay guys, so we are starting with our blueberries. And she used four cups of blueberries. I am using two cups, because I am also going to be adding two cups of Granny Smith apples. Something really nice and tart um, that will, I think, complement the flavor really well. Just to do something a little different, she said use any fruit, so I thought this would be a really good combo. So two cups of Granny Smith apple, uh, two cups of fresh blueberries. Mine have been frozen, so they look a little sad. <laughs> I'm also adding a quarter cup of honey. Now It comes from a local beekeeper, um, a friend of my son's, so uh, it's delicious. And um, I'm going to be adding a quarter cup of that to my barbecue sauce. I'm also going to be adding two and a quarter cups of brown sugar and I just made a fresh, a fresh batch of this morning for this recipe. So two and a quarter cups of brown sugar. For me, it's homemade brown sugar. And I will leave a link up above. If you don't make your own homemade brown sugar, you are missing out. So easy, so economical, and much more delicious than any store-bought uh, brown sugar you can buy. Okay. We are also adding three cups of uh, apple cider vinegar. Now I am, I am using an organic apple cider vinegar with the mother in it. Um, so that is what I am choosing to use. And then over here we've got our spices. So I've got one tablespoon of a granulated garlic and one tablespoon of granulated onion. Over here, I have one tablespoon of cumin, one tablespoon of black pepper, and a tablespoon of sea salt. And then, uh, just to switch it up just a little bit, I am using one tablespoon of sweet paprika, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, and a half a teaspoon of um, red pepper flakes, just to add a little bit of heat to this. There it is, guys. So now I'm going to take you over uh, to my stove and we're going to combine this and we're going to cook it down and then we're going to can it. So to the pot, we're going to go ahead and add the blueberries. Now I had my apples uh, sitting in some uh, cold water with lemon juice, so I just went ahead and strained that. So we're going to go ahead and add our Granny Smith apples to this. We're going to go ahead and add the apple cider vinegar. Ahead and add this delicious local honey. All right, here is my two and a quarter cups of brown sugar. That was uh, packed as well. And then we're 
gonna go ahead and add the spices. Okay. All right, then I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on the heat and I'm gonna set it to medium and then I'm gonna just start cooking this up. So, I will bring you guys back when we get it cooking here and get it rolling. We are going to take an immersion blender to this um, as soon as it starts cooking up. Now she did hers in a slow cooker. She did it on low for eight hours while she was at work, which I thought was genius. Um, I have to homeschool, so uh, I could have definitely put this in uh, the slow cooker, but... Um, I don't have time tonight to actually can it. So I'm going to try to get this done early this morning <laughs> and get this, um, get this on my, on my counter to cool until tomorrow, um, hopefully by noon today. So that's my goal. I already have my jars uh, washed. They're already in the electric, the ball electric water bath canner, um, sterilizing. I have my lids and rings washed and uh, ready to go. So as soon as this is ready, uh, we'll be able to can this and get this done early this morning. So look at that. It already smells good and I haven't even cooked it yet. <laughs> All right guys, I'm gonna bring you back when this starts cooking up. Okay, we hit it with an immersion blender. And now I've just been letting it kind of bubble and brew here. Cook down, thicken up. Let all those spices kind of merge. I gave it a taste test and whoo! <laughs> I knew it was going to be good. I didn't know it was going to be this good. Um, I was intrigued and now I know why. It's incredible. It's got a tang to it. It's not as sweet as I thought it would be. So if you're looking for a sweet barbecue sauce, um, you might want to add more sugar to this. Um, it is tangy. You've got the tang with a little heat, a little bit of sweetness and heat. Those pepper flakes added some it's heat. Be fantastic on chicken wings and barbecue ribs. And that's what I plan on using this for um, is ribs and wings out on the grill. So, oh, I'm so grateful she made this video and I'm so happy that I went ahead and decided to uh, give it a try. Like I said, I've never made a vinegar based barbecue sauce. I've only made barbecue sauce with, um, you know, a tomato background to it. This is wow. I hope you guys give this a try. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to... My brother, Paul, over at Paul Rule of, Rule of Thumb, he is also going to try this barbecue sauce and he's going to put his own twist on it. So I'm going to leave his link up above uh, to his channel. And then once he makes um, his video, I'll go ahead and link his video uh, to that too so you can see another version of this made. All right, I'm going to let this cook up a little bit more. Thicken up. It's starting to really get thick. It um, it blended beautifully with that immersion blender really quick. Literally like, you know, under 30 seconds it was done. Um, my house <laughs> smells like I want to eat it. They should make a candle in this scent. I'm just saying. Just for reference, my jars are hot in there they've been brought to a boil i boiled them for about 20 minutes and we are all set up i'm gonna say if you do not like a spicy barbecue sauce um yeah, spicy as in hot with the heat forego the pepper flakes um i've got boys and a husband who loves a, a heat on um on their food so uh, they are going to love this barbecue sauce. And when I made this, I had them in mind. So, all right, we're gonna get set up here and um, I'm gonna start bringing out my jar. Okay, well, I've been filming and my uh, camera did not turn on. Isn't that great? Ah, the joys of a YouTuber. Okay, so here we are, <laughs> we're filling jars. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this cloth 
you have a wet cloth right here. Um, make sure you use a towel. Uh, this is going to be messy. Also, um, when we're doing water bath canning, for those who are new out there, this is just for the newbies. You canning queens out there, you already know. Um, when we're doing water bath canning, you always want to bring out one jar at a time from the canner. Uh, that way your jars stay hot and as sterile as possible. Um, pressure canning is different. You can line up, you know, your jars like soldiers. But when you're water bath canning, you really should do one jar at a time. Just to keep it clean and keep it safe. So, there is one jar. We're going to do another jar together since, <laughs> since I didn't film any of it. Okay, so one jar out at a time. I'm going to put that. Hopefully you guys can see that. I always keep an extra jar in the back to keep my funnel just so that it stays clean. Again, I had it in the hot boiling water. Um, so I want to try to keep everything as clean as possible. I'm doing a half inch head space. Okay, then we're taking and we're just going to bubble it a little bit. It's pretty liquidy, so there's not a whole lot to uh, debubble. I'm going to go ahead and wipe the rims with some vinegar. I do not mix vinegar and water. I just do straight vinegar. It just turns out better for me. Um, I rarely ever have a failed seal. So hot, so hot water uh, for my lids and my rings. Soften that compound a little bit. Keep them nice and clean. And there you go. Into the canner it goes. I'll do one more jar together and then uh, we'll see how many jars I get. I think Lori got six. I have eight in my in my canner, so I'm hoping for eight. Um, but we'll see. Okay. Down below, I will leave my Amazon affiliate link. Um, there, if you click on that link, you will find a tab for canning. And um, there you will find my canner. You will find my tools that I use, my spatula, uh, my lid lifter, the uh, scoop that I'm using, um, all of it. I list all of that there for you so you guys can find it easily. And um, and for those of you who don't like the links, just don't click it. Just don't click it. It's not a big deal. I add links for those who ask me for them. Okay. All right. Let me wipe that rim one more time here. All right. Woo! Hot. Hot stuff. Oh, it's so pretty, you guys. All right, so far I have five jars. I'm getting very excited. I'll do one more. I know this makes the video longer, but there's so many of you guys that appreciate seeing the process. And my videos really are for those people. They're not for the people who, you know, don't care about canning or don't want to see it or don't want to see a long video. This really, my videos really are meant for people that are like me who like to see the whole thing so that when I do it, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I appreciate watching the process. So, okay, let's debubble it. You can use a better debubbler than what I have. I just grabbed what I had on hand here. And then I'm going to go ahead and wipe that. Grab a lid. Okay, grab a lid. 
Alrighty. Woo, hot stuff. Fingertip tight. And that is number six. All right. I'm going to keep going here. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave them down below for me. I will try my best to answer them. And I get a lot of questions. I might just do a canning question and answer video for you guys. Now, I don't know if I will get one more jar out of this. Let's see. Let's see if I can squeeze one out here. If not, I will go ahead and add this one to my fridge. And I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. Okay, so I got six and a half. All right, that's okay for me. That's fine. So what I'm gonna do with this one is, all right, I'm gonna add a plastic lid to this, okay? Just like that. I'm gonna label it, and then this will go right in my fridge. So this is just gonna sit right on my counter. I'm gonna let that cool and um, clean up my mess, because you guys know I don't like a mess. <laughs> so I'm gonna spin you around, there are all our jars. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and take out this extra one that we're not going to use. And then I'm gonna reposition these. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on this. Now this is the ball electric canner. I love this thing. Oh, it's like one of my favorite tools. And I'm gonna turn this on all the way. Now I've had it, uh, when I was sterilizing the jars, I had it on high and it was bubbling and brewing. Then I went ahead and I kicked it back down to low while I was pulling them, the jars out. But now that, um, now that we're gonna can, we're gonna go ahead, what is that? I don't know, but I must clean it. Um, we're gonna go ahead and set it to the canning position, okay? So there, there's a green canning position. And you can hear it, it's, it's ramping up and it's gonna bring this to a full boil. And when it comes to a rolling boil, we're gonna time this and I'm gonna process these for 35 minutes. So when that is all done and we pull them out of the canner, I will bring you guys back. Really quickly, I just wanna show you guys, so I'm gonna bring this over. I just want to show you how thick this sauce ends up being. You know, blueberry has some natural pectin in it, and of course, so do apples, right? Pectin is, powdered pectin is actually made from apples. And this is nice and thick. So when you go to put this on your um, meat, if you're gonna put it like, like I am on chicken wings, um, on a barbecue, you know, for ribs, or anything like that, if you're gonna put this on a, a a pork loin or anything like that it is going to stick to it and it is a beautiful color so it's delicious you guys I really hope you give this a try um, it's really really good all right I'm gonna stop yammering on I will see you guys in about mm, 45 minutes right, so. you guys so I'm actually I'm actually gonna move this right back here and then I'm gonna take these beauties out. Now, somebody did hit me up and ask me if I take the water off of the tops of my jars, and I don't. Um, someone also noticed, they watched a video that I did like five years ago. I noticed that I used to tilt my jars to get the water off, and now I lift them straight out of the canner. And that is because, you know, when you know better, you do better. And it is no longer recommended that you tilt your jars to get the water off. So I just lift them straight up out of the canner and then whatever water is left on the top of the jars will just naturally come off. Mm. 
Okay. There we go. So there it is, you guys. I hope you give this a try. I hope, I hope you guys go over and check out Whipper Will Holler's video um, and go subscribe to her. I'm telling you, you guys will love, love, love her channel. Also, make sure you go over and subscribe and check out Paul's video because he's going to do a video reply to this. Um, I would definitely say if you want it less spicy, hold back on the pepper flakes and maybe the smoked paprika, maybe some of the cumin. Um, if you like it a little sweeter, you can add sugar to it. You can tweak this any way you want. Um, I love it like this and my family is going to love it. So when I go and crack open a jar and use this on chicken or ribs, I'm going to bring you back and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Um, so, all right, guys, that's it. I'm going to go and homeschool now, and you guys have a great afternoon. I'll be seeing you soon because I'm I'll see you back here for another canning video. I've got another canning project coming up, um, so I will be seeing you guys soon. I'm also going to be doing a um, braided inside-out um, cinnamon raisin bread coming up soon, too. So a bread video and another canning video is what you guys got to look forward to. That's on my agenda. All right, guys, I will be seeing you soon. Bye, guys.